This you see on the screen is not some type of model rocket. This is fully working water jet. This water jet operates in a bit different way than traditional version. Instead of having one nozzle, this model has four of them. The nozzles are connected to the water jet with pull joints, which mean they can move, which mean this water jet can steer the stream of the water for every nozzle. This was hard to pull off, but I managed to do it. And in this video, I show you how I did it. The craziest thing, this is fully 3D printable and you can do it also. This video is sponsored by Hay Gears. Before I explain how this water jet works, let's first understand how the regular one works. The basic water jet works by sucking in the water through an inlet at the bottom and then pushing it out at high speed through the nozzle at the back. This powerful stream of the water propels the boat forward. Instead of using traditional propeller, the water jet uses a force of water to move and steer the boat. The magic of the water jet is the nozzle. Imagine a tube where the water flows through, but at one end the tube shrinks. What will happen? When the tube shrinks, the water has to flow through a smaller space. As a result, the water speeds up. This is because the same amount of water has to pass through a narrower area, increasing its velocity. This principle is what happens in a nozzle, where the water accelerates as it exits, creating a powerful jet. Regular water jets have one nozzle with a diffuser, but in our case, instead of having one nozzle, it has four. When the water is forced through the impeller, it enters to the four different pathways to exit the water jet. Those four pathways are four independent nozzles. Then at the back we see those rocket nozzle looking nozzles. Those things are actually not nozzles at all. They are called buckets. Bucket makes the jet stream steerable, by what we have ability to steer, for example boat, where it attached to. When the impeller rotates at high RPM, the water is pushed forward, but also because of Newton's third law, the impeller push itself in opposite direction. This creates a huge force on the shaft and it is transferred to the motor or gearbox. Most likely it's fatal for the system. I have made this mistake before and it didn't end well. To transfer the force correctly we have here this type of thing called shoe. This transfers all the force to the water jet housing and to the boat body which make it actually move forward. Also we have an option for water cooling. The bucket section was the most complicated part of this whole project. I messed up multiple times. It was difficult because we are using pull joints and the clearances have to be insane. To get this part working, there is no other way to use resin printer. Actually, everything for this water jet is printed with resin. And for the printer, I used Haygear Ultragraph Reflex RS. This printer is high-end resin printer, but at the same time it's so effortless to use and extremely fast. On average it took only 4.5 seconds to print one layer. For resin printer it's really good. But not only it's good looking, fast and fancy, it's also reliable. Auto bed leveling, making sure that your first layer is always spot on. Resin heating, making sure that the print is done in the best possible environment. Real-time monitoring, allows the users to monitor device status, to detect issues early. Look how cool this is by the way, this you see on the printer screen, those things look like a heartbeat, but actually it measures the force of pulling the print away from the resin film. So as long as you see those heartbeats, you know the model is sticking to the pull plate and there is no failure happening. The slicing software Blueprint Studio is so advanced and reliable, you don't need to use your own brain. The software can rotate the model how you want. Are you interested in printing fastest possible printing direction, smallest exposure area, least amount of supports required, you name it. Even if you mess up, the software will know and will tell you there is a problem and the print will not succeed. For printing my water jet parts, I use two different Haygears resins, PAVV10 and PAS10. The first one is water washable resin for designers working in home settings. It has low water absorption and maintains the high surface and dimensional accuracy over time. It closely matches the durability of oil-based resins and is the fastest resin for RS. And the PAS10, a model resin outstanding in both surface and dimensional accuracy. I use this resin for printing nozzle stage, buckets, impeller and all those small details we need for the assembly. Haygear's printers are absolutely outstanding piece of engineering. This fits perfectly for engineers, designers and 3D hobbyists. If you wanna know more about this printer, the link is down below. When we finally have everything 3D printed, I give those parts a little paint job. 
Let's be real, if we keep all those parts with this boring grey color, it will not be fast. So to increase the performance of the upcoming watershed, I painted all the body parts with a bit darker grey. The nozzles with, I don't know, they call it creamy yellow. And to be honest, the nozzles look pretty tasty now. For the section where the impeller will be placed, I used Heigir transparent resin. And after printing, I wet sanded it. Then I used some clear coat and the result is... fine. I mean, you can see through it, but it's not clear as glass. Like PCB weightings, which is absolutely insane. But at least something. Previously, I nozzle aka bucket section. But now it's fixed and I show you how it goes together. Three of those buckets are different models. Up and down are exactly the same model. And those two on the sides are almost the same, but one has a little thing where you can attach the servo rod for steering. The first step for the assembly is to attach those things that connect all the buckets together to the up and down buckets. It's important that this step is done before the next one. Otherwise, you just cannot get them there. Also, it's important that bolts are not screwed too tight. They have to move freely. Next, we push all the buckets to the ball joints. This piece, by the way, is the actual nozzle. It might take a little bit of force, but they should snap in there pretty nicely. When all four of them are in place, now we can connect all of them together. Because those buckets are connected to the nozzles with the ball joints, we need to make sure they are not falling off there randomly, by using those little cutoffs. To attach those, I also used M2.5 bolts. Right now there is a bunch of friction and they don't move freely. It's easy to fix by using some lubrication. I'm using silicone oil. And now they move as smooth as butter. The nozzle bucket section is ready and we can move on to this part. Not much to do here, we just have to install one o-ring in there. It was impossible to record by the way. And one 608 ball bearing. The fit of the bearing is also really tight, a bit hammer is required. It didn't mean to be so tight, but it is what it is, yo. Then I covered the bearing with a small lid. We are not completely ready to put all this together. Now we need a shaft. The shaft is 8 times 220 mm and 60 mm of the shaft have to be flat. I filed one side flat by hand. I'm doing this by hand because I don't have tools to work with metals and by my own experience, I have gotten the best result doing so. 2000 years later. I have my shaft. And now we put everything together. It doesn't matter which order we do it, but as long we push the shaft through it where it's supposed to and align all the screw holes correctly, we are good to go. Again, the fit is really tight and it's supposed to be. Actually, at the beginning it was so tight that they didn't go together at all. So I had to do some sanding. I fixed those clearances in CAD, but I just didn't print new parts because of 0.2 mm error. So instead I just sanded a bit off. Now I used M4 x 70 mm bolts and secured them all together and building is done. The water jet is together. Just to see does everything works correctly, I give it a little spin with the power drill. And all seems to be okay. But to actually test this water jet, my test setup looks like this. I 3D printed this huge box with ABS where I attached the water jet. Because it's ABS and this part is huge, I had some warping and layer separation. I used hot glue to fill up any gaps to make sure no water gets in while testing. Also around the water jet. Inside there is a motor, well to be exact it's my 4 motor gearbox. I also used this last time when I test my previous water jet. They are connected together with a coupler and the power I will take from the 6 amp lipo battery. I think everything is covered now and we can actually see does this water jet even works. The first test I did in my backyard in a small plastic container and I was really fine with the result I saw. As you see it works well, but it's hard to test this in this plastic container, so I drive to a lake to have a bit more space to test this.
The water jet works and it works extremely well. This is the best result I would hope for this project. When I was designing this, the whole time I was thinking what is the thing that doesn't work where it is. It turned out it doesn't exist. I'm extremely happy how overall everything turned out, but there is a room for improvement. We see on the footage that it leaks a bit. Well, it's tradition, but actually it shouldn't. Between those water jet housing parts, they're supposed to go silicon. I didn't add this because I was so sure I had to take this apart and fix something. But I didn't. This is a good thing in my mind. By the way, you can print and build this also if you have resin printer. And you have an opportunity to support the work what we are doing in this channel. This model is not free, it costs 1 euro, aka dollar, basically same thing. Watching this video is already huge support for the channel, but if you wanna support with a little bit extra, you can buy the model. So it's not a donation, you can get something back from it. I would never ask for donations. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And build the model by yourself. By the way, if you do, send me a picture to my Instagram. you find my Instagram down below. Also, check out the new Hay Gears printer and see you guys next time. Bye.